Former homeless people, what did you need the most? What was the best thing someone did for you? For me it was socks. Shoes too. But the simplest thing of socks made me feel better about myself. When it was cold I could pull out a pair or four to use on my feet or hands. Gifted me an old, baggy waterproof jacket with a big hood. It had many pockets too. A little large to carry around. Since I was carrying a lot of other stuff, too. But proved very useful. It was very rainy at that time. Hygiene. Anyone who let me take a shower and shave was an angel. Employment. I wasn't addicted, and wasn't mentally ill, but I had legal trouble and employers aren't going to hire someone who is probably going to jail 5 months from now. I had to work under the table for like $4 per hour. If there had been a way for me to get a decent temp job I could have probably got a crappy apartment for the interim. I was able to secure a spot in a church basement for a little while. The nicest thing anyone did was one of the people from church brought me a Super Nintendo and a stack of games to help keep the boredom and loneliness at bay. <laughs> Clean socks and underwear and basic hygiene. The best thing a person did for me was explain to me that nobody gives a frick about me except me and my family. That conversation went a long way to me stopping shooting up in alleys and getting a career. <laughs> my wife was homeless as a teenager. On Friday afternoons, a businessman would walk up to her and ask her if she was hungry. She would say yes, and he would take her into the restaurant on the corner. She never felt any danger with him, and she has had to cut somebody badly before. He was just some dude offering her a meal. He would let her get anything in the menu. He would sit and read the paper and drink a cup of coffee. There was never any conversation. When he was finished, he would pay the bill and leave. There was never any exchange of words other than you hungry and have what you want, and have a good afternoon. This happened multiple times. She never felt like a project to him. She never felt less than him. She never felt in danger. He was just a guy who saw a dirty girl on the street who needed to eat. She has since gotten her ged, graduated from a trade school with a fitness degree, and now has earned her MBA with honors. She is an amazing woman and an amazing mother. The one wish she has is that she can run into the businessman who bought her lunches and thank him. Showers and a place to wash your clothes to save as much money for food to be able to get dollar menu items and feed yourself 3 times or 5 dollars and some change. Not sure if living in the car counts as homeless though but a 93 a could ain't exactly a home. Definitely letting me shower, giving me new sharp clippers for my toenails. From constantly wearing boots and not having clippers, your nails get really long and start to become really painful. Giving me bags of food for my dog, letting me bathe my dog, fresh socks and underwear, doggy sweaters or rain jackets for my dog, pretty much hygiene for myself, food treats and warmth for dog face. Currently homeless, okay and my way to getting in a place, the one that struck me the most, I was sleeping in my car in the back of a parking lot about a week after I lost my place, about 6.30am security knocks on my window. Sorry, lady, I can't let you stay here, the usual. I apologized and told him I'd be out of high's hair in a few minutes. So I got up and was packing my blanket and pillow into the trunk when he came back and handed me $5, told me to go get a coffee. I pride myself on the fact that I'm working, not begging. He's the only person who has handed me money. It was one of the most touching things that has ever happened to me. I sat in my car and ugly cried for about 10 minutes, then went and got myself that coffee. The biggest thing someone did for me, however, was a complete stranger covering the cost of my storage unit for a month. I'm in there almost every day. Clean clothes and all that. She does eBay or something similar. We've run into each other a couple times a week since I became homeless. She picked up on the fact that I was leaving in different clothes than I had coming in and asked about my situation. I'll admit, I was a little defensive, but honest. Stopped seeing her around after that. Not sure if she moved or changed her routine or what. Come the end of the month I go into the office to pay my bill and am told that it's been covered. I wish I could thank her. When I lost my job after the Y2K remediation, I wound up broke as a joke and no hopes of job from anywhere in Oregon at the time. A girlfriend got asked to come take over her family's failing company business in Utah and we decided to go for it. Got here with nowhere to live, no money, one stroke for a tank of gas. We lived in our cars for a while then we found a row of three abandoned houses in Provo and squatted in the middle one. 
while she tried to rescue the family business. I got a gig delivering those stupid free newspapers that people get in their driveway. My wife's car was a long bdef 350 so we could deliver a ton of papers. That's what kept us fed. I was 32 and a paper route was my only income. As far as the nicest thing anyone did. One day a guy came and knocked on our door, saying he was the house owner. We said sorry and we will pack up and GTFO right now. However, the guy was nice. He said he owned all three of these empty houses and thanked us for keeping the coke heads out of them and he let us stay there. He even turned the power on for us. Six months after that I wound up getting a job at eBay. And it was onward and upward from there. So really all we needed was a chance. We got it. Somewhere to sleep. Without sleep nothing works right. 15 years ago the most crucial things we needed were impossible like a mailing address, phone number, toilet, and water. We'd keep a payphone under watch for those who'd get calls, trying to get a job, housing, anything. The basics are hard. Now phones are cheap, but water and toilet are still real needs. Addresses are still tricky but easier as we rely on a location less and digital info more. Public transportation is still ridiculous. You have to spend a day or two convincing the system you need it free. Otherwise you'll be out what little you can make in a three transit path. I was homeless at 14 in New York City. The thing I needed most was to be able to see the finish line. To know when this would come to an end. The feeling was like being put in prison without committing a crime and not being told your release date so you couldn't even count the days. A desolation so dark that it all but drained the life from me. I'm 60 years old now and that feeling still comes back to me. At times I feel like I'm still on the street. I'm homeless currently living in a motel. Have been homeless for 4 years as of this month. We need ways to clear our names so we can actually move into places. My mom got evicted from our apartment after getting laid off and now we can't move in anywhere half decent anymore. Only motels and living with other people. Also, stability is really nice, but almost impossible to come by for more than a few months. The nicest thing was an old couple taking in me and my mom for 3 months. Some really great people and I'll always appreciate them money lol but really it's stability that's the hardest to come by nobody has faith that anybody homeless can make it out of their situation but as a man who has been on his own since 16 with nothing but the clothes on my back it's hard to come from nothing to stable just need someone to believe that you have the hustle to grind and make it out i was a street kid from 13 to 18 i coasted around on my own as you can imagine it was a pretty rough ride I don't remember an awful lot of it, but a few people stand out even now. I think the only thing they have in common is that they saw me. It's amazing how invisible you feel on the street. People steer their children away from you, avert their gaze, pretend you're invisible. It gets to you. I vividly remember this one woman, immaculately dressed, gorgeous Eastern European woman, around 40. I was panhandling and she walked right up to me and asked me to eat with her. We sat on a patio smoking cigarettes, snacking, drinking coffee. She asked me questions about myself like she really cared. And she listened. Didn't offer miracle solutions or pity. Just fed me lunch and listened. I remember her face 15 years later. It's why now, in my reincarnation as a soccer mom, I teach my children to always acknowledge when it's safe to do so. You don't always need to give, but a smile, or a how are you goes an incredibly long way. Aged out of foster care nowhere to go but a squad house I was what Utah folks called a planter box kid. Spent a year doing any job and every job I possibly could to get out of it then I joined the army. Spent 4 years as a soldier and failed a marriage which meant when I got a medical discharge after my deployment I was homeless again. Spent a little while in a veteran group home but they only give you 90 days to get a place and get out. My disability pay wasn't enough for rent but I went to a day labor and stood with the Mexicans at Home Depot for odd jobs. Finally my best friend offered me to move back home to Texas or work as a ranch hand for her dad so I moved her back to Texas she became a huge advocate for me with the VA and now I run a ranch. I'm off all my pain psychoactive drugs and haven't been drunk in 3 years. Oh and now my best friend is my wife. We have 4 kids. Official identification. All the homeless people I speak to have a hard time getting a stated. Showers and laundry facilities. 
a place to sleep and shower. You'll be amazed how much you'd value a good night's sleep on a couch or a bed then in the morning having a shower. A close second to those was actually someone taking my situation seriously and helped me through it. My situation was an odd one. I was considered too unstable mentally to hold down a job yet I still had to work because while I was considered by doctors and mental health professionals to be unstable, by my country's freaked up sense of what poverty is isn't, I couldn't claim any benefits. It didn't help that the one benefit I was entitled to was withheld from me by a vindictive housing officer and my abusive mother would steal most my money I got. I can only speak about my homeless experience but I had a point where I was at the lowest point and it took two suicide attempts to actually get any help for my issue. I left an abusive relationship and, turns out, he was right. I had nowhere to go. I slept under a train and shoplifted what few basics I couldn't go without, which, frankly, I still don't regret. Frick the Waltons, and got a job at a Burger King. I mean... Being homeless and all meant that my hygiene was horrible. Cut off all my hair to hide it but there's a certain point where you can't anymore. One of my managers pulled me aside and asked me what was up. She called out, sweetly as she could, the red flags she'd seen. My self-harm scars, my hygiene, the breakdown I had when my ex came through the drive through And I'm pretty sure she already knew what was up. At least somewhat. She started scheduling all of our shifts to overlap and taking me home with her, not far from my nest spot, so I could shower and eat dinner with her and her kid. Kinda just took me in as best she could. The shower was nice, so was the food, but the experience of someone giving a crap was what helped. Quite honestly, be kind. Tampons. People who let us wash clothes or shower at their place. A gym membership for the showers and such. Still homeless but not on the streets. What do I need the most? A job. What's the best thing someone's done for me? Paid my vet bills and dog meds. Someone willing to take a chance. When you're homeless and people find out, it usually results in a negative change in their perception of you. Particularly in the perceptions held by those who could potentially be employers and landlords. That's if you choose to disclose the information easy to do with employment if you're capable of staying physically clean. That is, regular showers and trips to a laundromat. Not so easy to do with a potential landlord, as you have to disclose your rental history. When you tell people you're homeless, you're bound to get people who will treat you with disdain. People who assume you're homeless because of some vice like drugs, alcohol, gambling, etc. There are many reasons for why someone is homeless that have nothing to do with how responsible you may or may not be. Such as natural disasters, fires, floods, illness or injury, and escaping dangerous situations like domestic violence. I'm not homeless because I'm irresponsible, or addicted to some substance, illegal or otherwise. I'm homeless because life threw a wrench at my head, and then started beating me with it while I was down. I had a clean rental history no evictions or anything of the like and I worked 40-60 hours a week to afford my bills, which took priority over everything. I could afford rent, but nobody believed I would pay it, just because I was homeless. Obligatory not formally homeless, but my buddy was, and from our experience I would say a place to stay, shower, wash clothes, and some structure. I took him in for as long as he needed rent free under the condition that he gets through school and gets a job. Now he is a drafter designer has his own place and a nice car. I am so proud of him and glad that I opened my door to him when everyone else had shut him out. Not the homeless man, but this is what a homeless man said to me. I had gone to a cafe and gotten myself a donut and frappuccino. I enjoyed the frappuccino, and was left too full for the donut. When I walked out the cafe, there was this homeless man begging. I have him the donut and told him to enjoy it. He said this is the nicest thing someone did for me this week. Please remember, homeless people are people first and foremost. Talk to them every now and then. Listen to them. Share your time. Share some food with them. They deserve love just as much as everyone else. What I needed most was a job. My entire life was structured around obtaining food and shelter first, and then I looked for work when possible. I also needed a weekly martyr pass to get around Atlanta. Without that pass, I was fricked. Living in Atlanta without transportation is hopeless. The nicest thing anyone did for me? Sack lunches. I stayed three weeks at a shelter in Marietta run by Methodists. There were no sermons. 
These were just decent people who gave us food and beds for three weeks. They volunteered their nights to stay up all night and watch over us. The thing they did that really made me all warm and fuzzy. Every morning when we left for the day, on the way out the door they handed us a sack lunch. Typically a peanut butter sandwich, a piece of fruit, and a bag of chips. It was just like being a kid and leaving for school and mom hands you a lunch. That lunch made me feel like someone on this planet actually cared about me. It was the first time I'd felt that in the months. I didn't even realize how low I was feeling until that first sack lunch made me tear up like a softy. I'd go out into the world on the never ending job search. And when I eventually ate that lunch, I felt loved. It really lifted my spirits. My auntie was homeless and she said the best thing was when a laundromat lady who had taken a liking to her offered her shower and a pair of clean clothes to borrow for a job interview. My auntie got the job and built her way up from there. Safety. I was homeless from around age 19-ish through age 21. I got screwed out of my employment and my sister, who was my roommate, kicked me out when I couldn't make rent. She kicked me out maybe a few days after I lost my job, so she didn't even give me time to find something else. I was living paycheck to paycheck so I had no savings. I lost my car pretty quickly which took away even more of my ability to try and get a job. I was in and out of friends houses, staying with friends in hotels, hanging out in an IHOP just for a place to be. I became friends with regulars and the staff so they fed me from time to time, but I can't express how. Scary and dehumanizing it was. As a female I got taken advantage of a lot by my friends. They took it as a free pass to be able to do whatever they wanted to me because I had nowhere else to go. It was a dark time and I am so thankful I never turned to drugs. I had a few friends that genuinely cared and would ask me if I had eaten and bring me food, or let me sleep at their house without assaulting me and honestly, they kept me alive. Eventually my mom had met and married my stepdad and when he caught wind of what was happening he lost his goddamn mind and immediately bought me a plane ticket to come stay with them. I didn't talk to my mom for years and I didn't know my stepdad so it was a really hard to transition but he really was the best thing to ever happen to me. I went from homeless to having a steady career, a wonderful boyfriend, a beautiful daughter and a very comfortable life. Serious, Redditors who were once homeless. What was the scariest creepiest part about being out in the streets? Spent 2007 to 2012 homeless. Most of that was my teenage years spent with my father. Also homeless. The scariest thing is spending the evening in some homeless shelters, or out of them in this case. I was in one in Portland, Maine. My dad was assigned a spot to sleep on the floor because they were overcrowd that day. They didn't have a spot for me so I slept across the street in the garden of the local Catholic church since the priests don't kick people out. It was a popular place to sleep when the shelter was overbooked. I remember sleeping in the grass near a couple whom I overheard talking about robbing me for well over 20 minutes. I didn't let go of my knife all night. The most surreal moment was a short stint in 2010. When I walked into the 400 square foot studio apartment my dad had finally been able to afford for a short while and asking him, this is all ours, we lived like kings that few months. The thought that someone would find your camp and ruin your crap was a real concern. Also just finding some here to sleep that is secure. One morning, early, I was sleeping in an abandoned warehouse up a set of stairs nearly in the rafters and was woken by four raccoons like four feet from me eating my bag. Having to crap in the middle of the night is also awful. Being homeless is only scary for a couple of days. There's depression and boredom that are your real enemies. Your body and mind go into a sort of hyper survival mode and there is no room for fear. I have this weird tendency to stumble upon homeless camps that are very clearly supposed to be hidden and it always makes me super uneasy. Doesn't help that that's apparently a huge fear. Lived out of my car for 6 months when I was 16 to get away from an abusive mother. The scariest part was worrying that the authorities would find out. I didn't want to end up in foster care, or forced back into that heck of living with my mother. I still went to school, and I showered and sometimes stayed over at friends houses if their parents were okay with it. If I thought friends parents were getting worried about me being over so much, I would sleep in my car. Sometimes friends would sneak me in and I would sleep on the floor of their bedrooms and sneak back out around 5 in the morning before their family woke. It was rough, but better than being abused and locked up at my mother's. 
managed to get a job at a fast food place and eventually a friend's church group found someone who rented me a small apartment at a discounted rent. Only went up from there. I finished high school and while I couldn't afford college, I consider myself more well off than ever. It was the scariest hardest time of my life. When I was 12 13 I used to have to avoid home due to a parent using them and the people that they brought by. So I used to sleep in our childhood tree fort the first few times, up into the woods about a half mile off the road, and up a hill. It was a good vantage point in case I heard anything. One night I woke up and looked out to just see a guy staring up at the fort and I froze and held the gaze and slowly lay down onto my back. I heard him walk closer and just thought to yell. Dad wake up someone's coming up he darted off into the woods but had I not thought to say that who knows. My dad lived two states away and the only bluff I knew to yell. From that point on I found a friend's attic loft and told him my life situation so he let me stay there at times. Being snuck into a warm place to sleep out of the snow at times is a magical warming level of love. Glad I had that friend. This story gave me the chills. Good call to yell out to dad. How little you matter to anyone. There are two kinds of people I learned to avoid very quickly groups of young men teenagers and fellow homeless men. If someone's gonna frick with you, they'll fall in one of these groups, and people may watch disapprovingly, but they won't do anything to help you. It's less important to most people that you be somewhere safe or with a bit of shelter from the weather, than it is that you be where they don't have to see you. Most of your interactions with people such as the police, who in normal life you consider to be concerned primarily with your safety, when you are homeless are more about making you less inconvenient to others. Everyone is gonna try to steal from your ass so watch your crap. Keep your mouth shut and find a good place that is desolated from nocturnal animals and buttholes. Bugs. I used to sleep behind dumpsters, and the fear of roaches crawling on me in my sleep was enough to make sure I only slept 2-3 hours. Made me try to find hospital bathrooms and just lock the door for 5-6 hours. The hopelessness and pressure of knowing the longer you spend homeless the harder it is to get out of it. At least that's what I got from the people I talked to. I was homeless for a summer but really I was just a kid having an adventure and I didn't feel good at home. Talking to people whose parents were homeless and had no life skills, or those with addiction who had no support to help them kick it and get back on track, or people who no longer knew how to even begin to find a job scared the crap out of me. I realized that a couple years of that and you would have to work super freaking hard to get out of it. I was never a super freaking hard worker. For some reason I feel like paying a homeless man for sex is even more rock bottom than actually being homeless. I moved out at 15 and lived near Muskegon, Michigan. Tried to avoid it, but that's where possible jobs and rides were so I went there to better myself. Was homeless for about a year and just couch surfed. Stayed with random people or just slept in abandoned buildings or parks. Scariest part was knowing that once the sun started going down, I had to lay low and find a place to crash for the night. Walking the streets of Muskegon after dark is freaking awful, especially when you're young. People tried to rob me, take advantage of me, sell me drugs, which I took, then follow my whereabouts, chase me just for fun. It was awful. I wouldn't even have anything on me except my clothes and someone would come up with a gun or knife and tell me to give them everything I had. One time when I couldn't give a guy anything, he beat the crap out of me just for fun and cut my arm up bad. Worst time of my life. Comma Muskegon. Yeah I hope you're in a better place now. I know some of the homeless around GR hung out at the mire I worked at and just laid low for the night. Night management usually had a heart and wouldn't say anything unless they got customer complaints. I never said a word when they'd come by the spray deodorants in my department to try and hide their smell the following morning. Crap's rough. All the people who assume you'll have sex with them for money. I was a young man at the time and I would get propositioned daily, mostly by creepy ass old men. The scariest bit would probably have been knowing that someone could kill you and no one would really know or care. The scariest bit would probably have been knowing that someone could kill you and no one would really know care. Too right. I'm in my second spell of homelessness. I have no friends or family to notice if I go missing. If I get murdered and my killer should take my wallet, I'm just another John Doe. I had really bad PTSD after Vietnam, and I spent about 4 years basically homeless. 
when I was in the rough the thing that got to me the most was the total lack of any kind of privacy. I looked for places to hide, but I never felt really safe. The constant vulnerability just seemed to build and build it was really hard to maintain like any kind of normal human. Honestly, it's a disgrace how the country will use up young men in combat and then discard them once they're too damaged to be useful anymore. I had a friend who got PTSD in Iraq, and while the support these days is better, it's still a far cry from where it should be. Winter. So true it's not even funny. I was once caught out in some terrible winter weather and thought I was dying of hypothermia. You don't know what cold is until your lips go blue and there's a noticeable delay in thinking move your arm and your arm actually moving. I'm currently in North Dakota, and no way am I going through that crap again, so I'm trying to move to the south. As a girl, the constant sexual harassment threats. I was always in the hood when I was homeless. Guys blocking your way to leave with their trucks to ask you to suck their dong for $15 and if you say no they drive in front of you even more if you try to leave. Just knock his side mirror off and run. A little while ago I was mentally ill in a bout of substance abuse and I ended up on the streets of Brooklyn. The scariest thing to me was how quickly I lost hope and how quickly I became invisible. Suddenly I could easily see how a perfectly normal person could make one wrong move in life and end up homeless for years if not decades. Luckily for me I caught a break, ended up in a psych ward after a short time homeless and had a few contacts to get me home to New England. I relate so much to this. Homeless living in a van in Williamsburg, then back to Boston, almost 2 years sober now, hope things are well with you, friend. I hate the dark. It's stupid I know but I always felt like something was coming for me. I always had to find a corner and hide from the other homeless. I don't know if I had to hide but I was very young and I'm a girl and I'd had my head filled with how every unsupervised girl got abused repeatedly. I thought I would literally be abused to death if anyone found me. On the upshot I rule at hide and seek. And I can almost sleep well outside of a corner. For me it fell to the point where I began to really, really, really dread the sun going down. I was only homeless for a short stint but hands down the hardest thing was the constant fear my dog would get taken from me or that he would be hurt. I have a small white dog who weighs a little under 10 pounds and I was always terrified someone would try to take him, either homeless people or people who thought they deserved him more than my homeless self. Thankfully I had a shitty car at the time so I had a place to sleep. At night I'd do my best to park at 24 hour gyms or with a for sale sign in the windshield because I was less likely to be asked to move along that way. I was working part time and my friend worked with animals so quite often she would bring my dog to work with her since it was allowed. Other days I spent what little money I had on doggy daycare grappens. We made it through and my dog is still mine. As soon as I had money in the bank I took him to a vet and got him all taken care of and I am typing this from my very own bed with him next to me. Maybe this is from a teen standpoint, but I was so envious of kids my age with their families. You see people Christmas shopping, or having a picnic and you just want to be included so badly. I want my parents drop me off at college or go shopping for clothes together. You are still very much a child in your head and long for things from your youth. But there is a paradox because you have to make some very fast adult decisions. I would see a daughter dressed to the nines for a night out with her family and want to be in her place more than anything in the world. I made a separate account because I don't want this associated with my regular one since I got my life back together. I used to sell services to random guys which helped me get out of being homeless after a few months. I'm not gay but I was desperate to get out of my predicament and did what I had to. I'm a pretty feminine looking man when I had long hair and that attracted a lot of old men. Lonely men. Just randoms. Never really had problems with other homeless people because I stayed in a local city shelter at night and had to leave during daytime. Hanging around convenience stores and parking lots where they have game rooms, slot machine rooms, is where I got most of my clients. Most of them were chill. Get what they want and leave. Some were crazy. One guy in particular wanted me to stay at his place overnight and spend the next day with him for a $1000. I decided cool and we went to his house. The guy had what I can describe as like a torture sex dungeon in his garage. 
He had some type of black filament with egg cartings all over the walls and BDSM type stuff laying around. I decided it wasn't a good idea and said I changed my mind but he wouldn't let me leave. We were yelling back and forth and he punched me in the collarbone. It didn't hurt probably because of adrenaline. I used to do Kyokushin karate as a kid teenager so after he hit me, I kicked him as hard as I could in the balls and kneed him in the temple and ran out the house. I ran from block to block hiding because I was afraid he would try to kidnap me or call the cops. I never saw the guy again even after going back to the spots I always hang out at. I eventually made enough money to get an apartment and eventually a logistics job for a supply chain. For your information that egg carton crap is anechoic, designed to be soundproof. Good call getting out of there. Being caught on a bench outside trying to sleep during a hurricane. How poor were you growing up? I learned not to ask for things because I knew I wouldn't get it. I was the only kid in the 7th grade that couldn't go on the field trip. The fee was $5. Growing up with a mom who was addicted to drugs was pretty rough mostly. She could never keep up a job and sold all our food stamps and gifts my dad sent us for pills and cigarettes. I remember eating saltanine crackers and ramen noodles for dinner a lot. Around birthdays and Christmas my sister and I would get nice gifts but my mom always sold them not long after for her habits. I'm guessing the only reason we had food most times and clothes that weren't donated to the church was because my grandpa stepped in. I live with him now and still every time we go out to eat and I see something that costs more than $5 I wonder how anyone can afford it. Even though my grandpa has a good job and we don't struggle anymore, I still worry about money. Hang in there, work hard, make good choices, and you can make yourself a better life in the future just like I did. We have a similar background. I'm glad you have a supportive grandpa. My mom and dad were high school dropouts and my mom had me when she was 17. I grew up in a 3 room shack with no electricity and a wood stove. It barely had running water for the one toilet and one sink. To run a light at night my dad would pull the battery out of the beat up piece of crap Ford Fairlane at night and hook wires to a light bulb. My birthday money from family members was my new pair of shoes every year and clothes were hand-me-downs from anyone my mom could make friends with. Rice and beans every dang night of the week. Even reduced lunch was too expensive. So my mom made PB and J and I ate cracked freaking weed every morning for breakfast. That crap disgusts me now. On my birthday one year my dad and I walked to the Stavin Marvin gas station on Ogilthorpe Ave in Athens, GA and he bought me a 50 cent coke. On the way back home I tripped and it fell out of my hand, hit a rock and exploded. My dad really couldn't afford another 50 cents, but he walked all the way back and bought me another one. But then everything changed. My dad was working in a machine shop for a bunch of engineers. He made the items that they designed. Well he started finding ways to make their designs better so they let him go to the design meetings. Then they showed him how to use CAD and he was drawing up blueprints. Then all of the engineers got laid off. One of those engineers got a new job at a place called Seba Vision. And he told the managers there about this really exceptional engineer he knew. So my dad, with no high school diploma was hired as an engineer based on word of mouth of other engineers. Our lives changed overnight. We had new clothes, a new car. Bought a house and for my next birthday I got a freaking Nintendo with one game. Holy crap. That was like heaven opening up and raining miracles on me. Now he's the vice president of R&D for a small company in Atlanta and he has put every single one of his five sons through 4-6 years of college. The part about your dad buying you another coke even though you guys couldn't afford it made me tear up. He sounds like a really great guy and I'm happy everything has worked out in the end. I honestly didn't realize that we were poor until I was in my teens. Me and my sister always got new clothes before the new school year, always had pretty good Christmas, and never went hungry. We lived in a pretty rural area surrounded by woods. We always had a big garden and grew everything from greens to hot peppers. I spent many a summer having pea picking competitions with my dad and helping him make his own hot sauce. Spent a lot of time on the bayou fishing, and during hunting season every free minute was spent in the woods hunting. It wasn't until I was about 16 that I realized what my parents had to go through to provide. I learned that we had a garden to have vegetables. I always thought that hunting and fishing was just a hobby for me and my dad but it was what provided meat for us. If we didn't bring anything home we didn't eat. They always managed to trick me into thinking everything was a game. 
I remember my dad buying me my actual rod and reel. He would tie old nuts and bolts on the string and challenge me to casting competitions. Who could get closest to that tree or whatever. Not knowing that he was trying to increase my accuracy to avoid having to replace baits. I remember when my grandfather gave me his old melon point .22 when I was about 10. I would spend my $5 a week allowance on bullets and just target shoot every day. My dad and grandfather would always set up new challenges and whatnot. I became a real good shot by the next hunting season and I was then a squirrel and rabbit hunting machine. I think this is such a good example of how living off the land is completely different from being poor in the city. Urban incomes might be higher than rural incomes, but so is the cost of living, and the quality of life is often far worse. As a very young child, my mom was a single mother raising two girls on what the government offered poor parents in the 90s and some help from family. We didn't live on our own until I was nearly 6, and we often had pizza which consisted of slices of bread ketchup stolen from fast food places, and American cheese. I loved it and our meager existence. Literally, I have no bad memories of that time at all and remember it as just this adventure part of my life when mom and me and my sis spent a lot of time together doing weird stuff. Then mom finished her nursing degree, met the man who raised us from age 5, 1 stroke 2 on, and started earning enough to make a living. We were never upper middle class, and we were often lower middle class. But we always had food to eat and clothes to wear after that. My mom worked her butt off for me and my sis. And my dad came with two more kids of his own. I've never met two harder working people. And their efforts really helped me grow into a person who appreciates hard work and self-made success. Our house is older than dirt and falling apart at the seams in some places. But we love it and all the memories made there are good. We used to have that exact pizza. Too. Warmed up in the toaster oven. Even in my 30s, I still get a taste for it sometimes. My family used to live in a squatter's area in a third world country. My father only made less than $20 a day. He was a driver for a public vehicle. Assuming he made $15 for 8 hours, this would be split between the vehicle's owner and the gas expenses. My mom stayed at home and started a few small businesses. In 5 years or so we never had a bed, just a sleeping mat, a few pillows and a blanket that fit the three of us on the floor. We also didn't have a proper dining table. It was a DIY small table from scrap wood that we placed on the floor. The same floor where we would sleep, when we were about to eat, then had it lean on the wall when unused. My mom was smart enough to not give birth to another child, realizing that raising one child alone was too much an expense. It was my mom's business that saved us. We eventually managed to afford a bed, then a CRT TV, then a fridge, and then a phone. By the time I got a computer I was already 13 and in a private high school, something that a lot of families couldn't afford. My mom passed away before I graduated from college, but left behind quite a few some that kept me and my father alive for the next two years. Our house is still up in that area and my father lives there by choice. I moved out because of work. One time my stepdad was so excited he found a dollar in his jeans that he didn't even notice my brother falling down the steps. What if every time you found money you just unknowingly made a deal with the devil? Like, if you pick up this dollar your son will fall off the stairs. That crap would be cool as frick though. Both of my grandpas worked 45 years at a distillery while running a farm on the side. We never ate out, but we always ate well. Apple, pear, plum and persimmon trees, blackberry, raspberry, grapes and boysenberry, fish from four ponds, cows, pigs, sheep, chickens, and wild game. My other friends went on vacations and flew on planes. I thought we didn't have all that much. I'm glad I lived long enough to know. I didn't know that other 7 year olds chores didn't include catching, killing, and skinning squirrels for dinner. For reference, I live in Kansas City, Missouri. Being afraid to ask for things because you know the answer will be no, and getting used to not being able to afford things. Eventually, you just throw out school flyers about school shirts, field trips that cost money, lunch money, school supplies, dances, trips, anything that costs anything. You learn to accept what you have and make it work, and when you actually get something, you understand that it actually means something and costs your parent. S. 
money they had to work for. Once I had my first job, I actually wasted the money on things I just kinda wanted because I had the luxury of being able to. It took a long time to learn to manage money wisely and it's still a process, because when you never have it, it's hard to understand how to hold on to it. There is a mentality when you are poor that you should spend the money quickly to buy things you want because if you don't it will be nickeled and dimed to death on things you need. Then you, seemingly, have nothing to show for it. My mom was addicted to drugs and our life was completely unstable. She worked as a bartender, sometimes three jobs, but was constantly being fired for various things and starting at a new bar. Sometimes she wouldn't come home for days. We were evicted from every house we ever lived in. I can't even tell you how many different schools I've been to without thinking it through. We were often homeless and had to live in CD motels. Our car got repossessed. Electric water gas was shut off several times throughout my life. I started life out with horrible credit even before I turned 16 because my name had been used to start electric water gas or whatever on various occasions and then went and paid. And to this day I have an aversion to meat eggs milk because I've had food poisoning so often from bad food. We used to eat at school over summer break because I had a lunch program running for neighborhood kids so even though I didn't go to summer school I qualified and my brother and I would walk to the school to eat. Teachers used to give us hand-me-down clothes shoes cause ours would have holes in them or whatever. We both got made fun of a lot for general clothing appearance issues relating to poverty. Once when I was in high school I was dating an older man who was abusive and we were evicted from our home and had to be out by midnight. My mom was working a shift and afterwards I had no idea where she went because she suggested I move in with my boyfriend instead since we really had nowhere to go. After a few days of getting beat up I caught her at work and found out she had been staying with my brother on the floor of one of her random customers apartments. He let me go there that night but the three of us were sleeping on the floor and I remember it being so hot and I just felt totally defeated by life and really heartbroken over everything. I was scheduled to take my sat the next day at school but missed it. Ended up getting a job at McDonald's and dropping out of school shortly after to work more. Staying with my abusive boyfriend on and off because it was better than nothing. Or just walking through the city all night sometimes because nothing was better than the boyfriend. And eventually was able to rent a room and get more of a stable life going despite a general trend in young adulthood towards abusive relationships and other obstacles I faced largely in part due to leftover childhood poverty issues. We were homeless at one point. Mum was swamped with debt because she could not afford to care for two children on NHS pay. She did it though and me and my sis vowed to never be in debt thanks to what she taught us about money. Also I bought her a car because that woman is the best. My mum would specifically go to two ATMs across the street from each other and withdraw 20, run across the street to withdraw another 20 before the bank realized that the account was negative from the first withdrawal. Growing up I remember multiple meals that were literally slices of spam and nothing else. A can would do between 2 and 3 days at a push. At my poorest, as an adult, I ate even less than that. My mom would count the pennies in my dad's jeans to see if we had enough to buy bread each week. Our fridge was hardly ever full and I remember we always had milk and dozens of boxes of craft dinner. We lived in Canada at the time, but bread and peanut butter was a treat back then. When my mom finally broke down and told my grandma, grandma did her a solid and bought her a bread making machine. It was the most delicious bread I ever tasted. We saved enough money that I got three Christmas presents instead of just one. A few years later my dad went from an underpaid scientist to a cushy American government job and our living situation drastically improved. My sister has forgotten those days, but I remember and save all the change I can find in a jar, just in case. Butter and bread equals lunch. I always went with mayo. My mom used the butter for her English muffin so we weren't allowed to eat either. Gifts on Christmas and birthdays are things you need, not fun things. Christmas is usually when I got all my soap and shampoo for the next year. Clothes come from Goodwill, Salvation Army, Savers etc. If they weren't coming out of something's lost and found. School yearbooks and pictures are unnecessary. The best meals of the week would be the half-eating food my mother brought home from her waitress job at the country club. 
I always thought I grew up poor because my parents were always stressed about money, but I always had food, and I always had a roof over my head. I just remember having our heat shut off in the winter and living in the Midwest where it gets really cold it was pretty bad. We all slept in a room with a little electric heater, and had to be up extra early to get ready for school because we had to heat our bath water on the stove and dump it into the tub. I remember thinking that was as bad as it gets, but then I grew up and realized I had it easy. Electricity and phone getting cut off. Asking the neighbor to lend bread for school sandwiches poor. Never had enough undies or socks poor. Bought school shoes way too big and resold them until they fell apart poor. But we were happy. It wasn't until I was a teenager that I asked mum are we poor? I was born in a family that worked in the crop fields of someone else. When I turned 15 I was made to work in the fields. I understood why and was happy to aid my poor family. We had a small hut and then everything changed when I finally got a job at an IT company. I feel like you left out a detail or three here. When I was born, my parents were very poor. Ate ramen noodles and canned beans a lot from my understand. They had to share an old eagle summit and could not afford rent without assistance from my grandparents. They had to pick between putting gas in the car for my dad to get to work, rent, or whatever food we could get our hands on. The government assistance was not an option. From what my mom has since told me, we made too high of an income to qualify for welfare, but we were too poor to really get by. What was fricked up to me was that my mother came from a blue collar, working poor family, but my father's parents were very wealthy. The poor grandparents scrambled and sold for every coin they had to help my parents out. The rich grandparents, they hung up on my mom and dad when they would call them for help. Very poor. My family lived in the boiler room basement of an old apartment. I thought my family was poor because all we ate was ramen. Then I visited a friend and all she had was cat food in her cabinet. I asked her where her cat was and she said she didn't have one. This makes me sad every time I think of it. We had to decide which utilities we were going to keep on each month. I can remember a few months where the electric bill wasn't paid and we chilled our milk and frozen groceries in the snow. Remember my mom sitting my brother and I down to explain we couldn't afford to rent blockbuster movies anymore. I remember asking my mom are we poor? She said something along the lines of no, but birthday and Christmas are going to be very small this year. On the upside my parents started a soda company and made millions afterwards and are now happily retired. All the other kids had backpacks, and I stuck my arms through the holes of a plastic grocery bag to wear it like it was one. I grew up in a single wide trailer, we ate actual government cheese, and peanut butter, which was awful because it was thin, oily, and contained whole peanut parts. We only shopped in the generic aisles of the grocery store, it's not like today with brightly colored great value products. All the packaging was stark white with the product description simply declared in bold black, corn flakes, pitted pear halves, mechanically separated chicken product. I don't remember being conscious of the fact that we were poor. I just thought TV movie families like the Keatons, Family Ties, or the Griswolds were unusually wealthy. Immigrants living in Brooklyn when I was 6. Our family of 5 was supported by my dad being an unlicensed cab driver. We were all our new clothes are purchased in warehouses from bins with exploding ink stains poor. All our vegetables come from cans poor. We couldn't even afford name brand ramen noodles. Serious, formerly homeless redditors, what's the best way to go out and do a nice thing for homeless people? Socks and toiletries. If I only had enough for one or the other, I'd buy the bottle that let me sleep in a park over a tube of toothpaste. Priorities are different when you're on the street, and not always for the reasons you think. I was never ungrateful for food, but there were two major issues. The first being that if you pick a good spot, you'll get multiple food offers every day. I can only eat so much, folks. The second being that if you just give me food, I now have to safely store it. I'm freaking homeless, not gonna waste the crap. So, now I add it to my pack. 
if it's perishable, I have to eat that day old crap before the hot meal the next day. Still grateful, BTW, but also hoping that it doesn't get me robbed or something when I squat for the night. Being homeless can be like surviving the wasteland in that way. Maybe that's why I'm so good at Fallout. Before this turns into an essay, I'll say just talk to them. Ignore anybody with a sign and no pack. They're doing this crap by choice, i.e. scamming. But, if you see someone, just set your limits and ask what they need. Be open to reason. Storing and carrying food, for instance, if you approach a legit person in need, it's just about understanding. One time I asked a guy if he could spare any change. He said he wouldn't give money, but he'd buy me something I needed. So, I checked my pack, and found myself okay. Not that I couldn't have used more, but you can only carry so much. So, I tried a compromise. I told him I was well equipped, but the truck stop up the road had showers. So, I asked if he could spare a ride and two dollars in quarters. He thought about it for a sec, probably decided I couldn't get high on two dollars, and agreed. I got my first hot shower in months, and he made it happen by being willing to look past, at least somewhat, his initial assumptions priorities. To this day, I have never enjoyed a shower more. I was homeless for a brief time. Showering was tough. It's not like you can carry shampoo and soap around. And there aren't tons of places to go. I would split a 5 minute shower at the L laundromat. $2.50. Kindness and humanity are the best thing you can offer. Even a smile. Human interaction. I was homeless on and off for a couple of years as a teenager and begging on the street is so dehumanizing. One time in Seattle, I'd arrived in the city and gotten lost trying to find a shelter or drop-in center. I hadn't eaten in two days and had barely slept. I stood on a corner with my bags begging for money and not a single person would look at me. After a couple of hours of this I started crying because I felt like a ghost, sobbing from my mental and physical exhaustion. Still, nobody would look at me or ask if I was okay. That day will always stay burned into my memory. As far as tangible objects, you can always ask them directly. Everyone will have different needs depending on where they're living and what has happened to them recently. Cigarettes, water, and transit cards are always good bets though. If it's getting cold, see if they have ways to keep warm. If it's in the rainy season, see if they have ways to keep dry. If it's hot, See if they have ways to stay cool. If they're female, tampons and pads are a freaking godsend. If they're human, ways to stay clean. I was homeless from age 18, 19 and I remember always wishing I could just have a smoke with someone. I lived in a shelter, so I had as much food as I wanted, so that wasn't an issue. However, I was a smoker and wasn't able to come by my own smokes a lot of the time. So I'd see someone smoking and casually ask them hey man can I bum a smoke people are generally cool with that. Then I'd get to have a quick chat with someone while we had our cigarettes together. It may sound weird, but it means a lot to just be able to exchange a few words with a stranger when your whole life is up in the air and you can't decide if it's better to stay alive or just end it because your friends have drifted away from you since you became a hobo. Now that I'm not homeless anymore, I try to offer a smoke and a chat or some fast food or something, because I remember always wishing somebody would stop and talk to me. I had a real need for underwear and socks. You can wear pants and a t-shirt for a long time but a week in the same socks and jocks makes it really miserable. When I got new ones I felt kind of human again, like I could survive and maybe even get things together. Most of all there is a bit of dignity and some respect. I was last on the streets when I was 19 and people seemed to think that I was some punk kid who didn't listen to his parents. I was beaten from room to room by a crazy mother and whoever she was dating. Abused by her most consistent boyfriend, expelled from school for acting out, kicked out of home at 12, and had been stealing food to survive when I wasn't living in and caring group homes. People told me to grow up and that I had no life experience, like they had experienced anything like me. Few people ever seemed to listen and even try to understand. I wasn't a drug addicted scumbag. I was a young man with no support and a lot of baggage. Seriously. Sometimes the best thing you can do for a homeless person is call them sir, shake their hand, make eye contact, and treat them with dignity befitting a human. I'm currently homeless in Southern California, 
so the weather isn't too much of an issue but it can get cold late at night so a sleeping bag is a godsend. One of the things I can never get enough of is hand sanitizer and wet wipes. I'm the type that is still trying to look normal while I'm job searching. So staying relatively clean is important. Since I live in a tent in a forest by the beach, it's not easy. Another thing is that even if someone has food stamps, odds are you can't get anything hot to eat. So even if it's something like a hot dog or hamburger, it's at least something different from the same cold food you have to get at the gas station over and over again. While I am currently homeless, it isn't easy at all I have only been homeless for about a month or so. I would say the best thing anyone has done for me was socks and an old sleeping bag. Also I do odd jobs for anyone that will let me so I can eat but once you start looking scruffy and smelling a little off. Lack of showers I try to bath at night in lakes ponds. It is a lot harder to find anything. Also razors, sunny towels, and deodorant are great. Another good thing is just simply talking to people. Don't give food with the condition of religion. I spent a month homeless and still technically until I can move into my new apartment, and this was something I kept on encountering. I'd have to swallow many sermons before I could get a sandwich. I was living in hotels and in a friend's car for about a week in the summer in southern AZ when crap went to heck. That itself was one of the hardest weeks of my life. I've noticed that in a hot climate, people appreciate bottled water more than anything else you can give them, and even if you can give just a dollar and wish them well. They will be grateful to you for it. Privacy. Seriously. Just privacy. I wasn't stoked to be in that position. I get that security guards have jobs. And that people shouldn't sleep in their cars but a well lit parking lot is safer. If I'm not making noise and I'm asleep just leave me alone. Actually treat them like humans. They're down on their luck at this point in their life. A point that any of us could someday be at. The least you could do is treat them with the dignity you would hope to be treated with. Were you in that situation? A public shower. Some clean clothes. A laundromat card. Detergent and a way to get online in the library to find work. A bus card. Breakfast. Lunch. Dinner. Vitamins and a $20 bill. That was warm weather. Now that the cold is here, a warm hooded coat. A backpack with Lysol spray and personal care items. A food card from McDonald's and a paid cell phone. What are the best life hacks for poor people? Please tell your doctor if your medications are too expensive. My parents work themselves to the bone and we ate like crap to help pay for medicine for me and my sister. Hemophilia. We needed medicine to help clot during our periods. They never complained and just worked. My mom didn't want anyone to know we were poor. There were cheaper alternatives. They could have saved thousands of dollars. I'm a family doctor now and I make it a point to talk about medication costs and ask at all of my follow ups if things are affordable. We don't know what your copay is and it's not always easy to tell what will be covered on your plan. Please let us know if something is too much. This is what we are here for. I work in the US. If your medication is too expensive and you have something other than Medicare or Medicaid try looking for manufacturers coupons. Simbacort has a great one for one year no copays right now. And some of the newer long acting stimulants do too. Ask about local compounding pharmacies. Mail order. 3 month supply or off label dosing. Pharmacists look away. Like you can use eye drops in your ears for an acute bacterial infections and sometimes they are significantly cheaper. I've done that once or twice when patients just didn't have the extra cash to get the one designated for your ears. If you need a procedure done and have a residency program or medical school local to you. See if they need any volunteers for didactics or demonstrations. We've done ingrown toenails, warts, skin lumps and bumps for free during lectures to teach the other residents how to do them. Two great sites. NeedyMedsOrg, GoodRx.com. We're not even really poor but my husband has a med that is kind of expensive in its extended release form but works way better. Talked to the doctor about it and she gave him a coupon that brought the cost down to only $5 more than the non-XL formula. It's seriously worth having this conversation. To all my fellow college kids who use Chegg as a lifeline but can't afford it. Use textcheek.com. Copy the URL of the blocked Chegg page and paste. Answer that you're under 13 on the survey so they can't ask you anything else. And bam. An unlocked text of the problem solution. 
eliminate food waste. Things you'd normally throw away like vegetable peelings and bones can be turned into flavorful stock for future meals. Something I do is save bread ends and or pieces of bread that got squished, stale, or whatever, in a bag in the freezer. Once I collect a decent amount, I thaw them out and make some homemade stuffing. It's super tasty, and feels fancy for just being bread, veggies, sage, and stock. Go to the library. Not only are there books there, but also you can check out video games, sewing machines, movies, museum passes, and so much more. Not to mention the software, education and events that can help you get a raise, promotion, or better job. Libraries freaking rule. I'm pretty comfortable financially but still use the library all the dang time. Mine even checks out wall art. Rich people throw out amazing stuff. If you know someone with a truck, you can go around the wealthy areas on garbage day and get all sorts of furniture, appliances, and clothing. A little cleaning and maybe a few minor repairs and you have lots of stuff to use or sell. If you wind up homeless, get a Planet Fitness Gym membership, $10 a month, so you can shower every day. The one near my work also has free Wi-Fi, free showers, free locked storage, locations in practically every city in the US, can shower, crap, shave, wash, even occasionally get free pizza. Added benefit of getting to work out, you could live in a car and spend $10 a month and slap together a semi-functioning form of homelessness. Don't have kids. I agree, having kids is a choice, and they drain all your resources. Not being mean, but that's reality, folks. If you have access, ethnic grocery stores usually have cheaper produce. Can confirm. Local ethnic neighborhood grocery stores have prices much lower than the bigger supermarkets. I more or less only shop local anymore. Hot sauce is a simple investment to turn sad, bland food into sad, slightly less bland food. Swing by a Taco Bell and you can get some for free. If you live close to one, Planet Fitness membership, $10 per month and the location near me does free pizza once per week, and free bagels once per week. That's 8 meals for $10, plus you can save on your water if you want by using their showers. Also when you're broke, it's hard to kill time and not spend money, so go to the gym and use their Wi-Fi to watch shows while you walk on a treadmill. It's honestly a great way to kill time. Kanji with a broth cube and leftover veggies and meat. When things are really tight, just rice, broth cube and water. 1 cup of rice with 6-8 cups of broth or water will stretch into several meals this way. It can be made really nutritious by adding more things, but when mun is tight this can satisfy your belly. Also, make use of all social services available to you. All of them. You're poor. These services exist to help you get by and make things easier. Apply for them even if you're 100% sure you don't qualify. You never know how else they might be able to help you. If you have pets. Find charities on Facebook that help provide food for pets to people with a low income. I can't tell you how much stress this took off my shoulders knowing I had enough kibble for my cats so they wouldn't starve and I could buy my own food instead. Don't be ashamed of being poor. I know people look down on you for that, but shame gets in the way of coping with poverty. Everybody can get poor at no fault of their own if circumstances align right. Even if you made less than smart choices, got a drug habit or whatever, you're not less deserving of basic human respect and kindness. Nobody is perfect, and poverty exists because governments don't implement or fund social services well. Frick with minimum wage etc. Everybody deserves to live comfortably and not have to turn over every penny three times before spending it, no matter how much character that builds. Poverty freaking sucks, and still come up short on basic necessities. You can donate plasma and be paid $30, up to 6 times a month, extra $180, it is supposed to hurt a little. I donate twice a week, for $70 a week, my donation center has monthly promotions, if I donate every week and I manage to get the promotion I can earn $300-$350 a month, by just sitting on my butt for a few hours a week. At Walmart or most grocery stores you can buy a rotisserie chicken for wicked cheap. They're actually cheaper to purchase cooked instead of raw. And you can make several meals out of just the meat you scrape off the bones. 
I often make sandwiches or apps and it'll typically last for like 6 meals, all for like 5 bucks. Then you get to use the carcass to make a stock. Especially if you go after 5 o'clock or so, they mark them down to move the product. Manage every dollar you spend. Know exactly where your money is going. You can't reduce spending and save more if you don't understand where your money is going. There are a number of apps out there that help you budget and tell you what you're spending money on. Mint, Truebill, ETC. Once you see the breakdown, you might notice that you're spending more on meals than you should. Or you had that subscription you forgot about that suddenly took $25 out of your account. Remember, being poor and being constantly broke aren't always the same thing. Sometimes you're just bad with money. Not sure it's a hack, but never, ever, let anyone or anything convince you that you're any less of a human being because of your crappy financial situation. Go to Aldi. Most stuff there, eggs, lettuce, salt, are just as good as other stores and much cheaper. We just picked up 4 dozen eggs for 79 cents each from Aldi. Quite a value when you're baking for a bunch of holiday stuff. Pop an egg into your ramen. Simple, cheap, and improves the taste a lot. Scramble or fry an egg and put on rice. Boiled but preferably fried rice. Whisk an egg and add to canned corned beef when cooking it in a pan. Soft boil an egg and have with toast soldiers. Cut toast into thin strips. Dip them in and eat. Learn to poach eggs and pop them on top of food like rice. Beans and let that you go through. Dot. Goddammit I'm hungry now. Shop at Goodwill second hand stores. If you are hungry and have no food, go to sleep. Sleep is my favorite hobby. So, in my area, bonus chicken breasts cost at least $10 for two. A whole chicken costs about $10 or less if it's on sale. I learned from YouTube how to dress, cut up, a chicken. So now I get two boneless breasts, two boneless thighs, two drummies and two wings for the price of two breasts. Also you use the carcass and the bits of meat attached to it to make soup. Buy the store version aka imitation brand, version of things. Cheaper and it works the exact same save for a few exceptions. Canadians, selection brand baked beans are crap. You don't need the expensive ass Heinz ones but I strongly urge you not to buy selection brand baked beans. Supercook.com has a recipe generator that will help you make good meals with whatever you have at home. Best thing ever. Went from boring basic meals to actual tasty meals. I just tried this with what's in my kitchen RN and it suggested butter curls, ingredients, butter and then 10 different recipes for plain white rice. I guess it's time to go grocery shopping. Drink only water. It's one of those ripple effect things that improves every other area of your life. I work in a welfare office. The number of people who are both one, unable to afford proper nutrition, supposedly, and two, morbidly obese is counterintuitive until you see the enormous soda so many people travel with. It's incredibly easy to drink more calories than you think you're drinking, and the fattening nature of these drinks is all in the sugar content. Switch to carrying water instead of soda or other sweetened beverages and I assure you the following will happen. 1. You will save more money than you imagine. 2. You will sleep better. 3. Food will taste better. 4. You will have more consistent energy throughout the day. 5. Your skin overall appearance will improve. And 6. You will lose weight. If you do nothing other than stop spending money on soda sweet tea etc and just drink filtered tap water, you will thank yourself. Source. Was poor. Now I'm not poor. Still drink only water. And unsweetened coffee. I'm over 40 pounds lighter. Sleep well. And feel better. When buying something that you expect to last, buy the cheapest version of it that makes sense. If it doesn't break and lasts forever, awesome. If it does break though, go out and buy the best quality one you can. If you broke the cheap one once chances are you'll break the cheap one over and over again so spending a bit more now will save future you from having to spend more money down the road. This is especially good advice with tools. Use coupons. I started doing this when I was making 8 bucks an hour, and still do it today. Take some time to add coupons to your account for grocery stores that do them online. Take some time to clip them from junk mail you get. In the average grocery trip, 
I still save between 30-40%. You don't have to be an extreme couponer or crazy person to save a lot of money. If you have to choose between keeping the lights on and paying for heat in the winter, keep the lights on. First thing in the morning when you get up, turn the oven on, if you've got one, for a few minutes and let that warm up your kitchen. Unless it's gas don't take the Sylvia Plath route out of misery. Get the cheapest old sewing machine you can find and hem and maintain your clothes. While lots of crappy clothes are super cheap, they fall apart after a few wears. When you can, buy decent clothes and take care of them. It will cost less in the long term. Get a library card. Libraries are sanity savers when you're too broke for other entertainment, as well. Get a local schedule of events and go out when something is free or very cheap. Keep yourself occupied, even when you are struggling with money. Get to know your local bakeries and other businesses, in particular their baking and delivery schedules. Old product that didn't move that needs to be sold or disposed of before a new shipment comes gets big markdowns. You can get decently healthy food for relatively cheap. If you live in some states, you can make decent extra dough collecting cans and bottles. I went door to door collecting cans and bottles after leaving a super crappy job many years ago. And while it was sometimes fruitless, and some people are less than kind to a person on their doorstep, I made more money that week doing that than I had at the job I had just left. A lot of people were thrilled that I was there to take their cans and bottles off their hands. I did it until I found another real job, and got to know some of the other folks that did that for a living. Real nice people, very supportive of each other for the most part, as long as you stayed out of their territory. Do what you can to maintain your friendships and relationships. Poverty is, among many other things, boring, and often very isolating. Stay connected to your people, live with other people, go out when you can, suggest cheap things to do. Eat the rich to absorb their wealth. Power move. Stop buying weed. I grew up in poverty, and nearly everyone smoked weed. The only people who didn't smoke weed were able to focus on a way out. Everyone I knew used weed as a bandage to cover a gaping hole in their ambition. You've been spotted by the doggo of studying. Like this video for good grades for the next two years. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.